Although I'd bought a NYX Robert boot on eBay before, this was really my first NYX boot and it's on Parkhurst's 602 last, which is my favourite last. Uh, what kind of a child was produced in this collab? G'day, welcome back to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajik people. Today I'm uh, reviewing uh, one of my favourite boots, revisiting it in fact, this collaboration between Nick's Handmade Boots, who made this boot, and Parkhurst, whose 602 last they used to provide a sleeker profile on their Falcon boot. I've already reviewed this boot a few months after I got it in August of 2023, and you can see that review from October of that year up here. So uh, in this short video, I'm just going to catch you up with how it's worn and broken in. Now, let me from the outset say that there is no way I do my boot collection justice. I no longer own all of them, uh, as I have passed some of them on, but to date, 122 boots have passed through my hands for review. In the early days of my collection uh, and reviews, from early 2020 when I started collecting heritage stitched boots and then started this channel in February of 2022, oh gosh, only two years ago, <laughs> Gosh, well, in the early days of my collection, I was able to really break in the boots I bought and I was really able to wear them in well and get to see them as how someone normal might actually see them. But certainly since 2022, it's been frenetic. <laughs> and I have to be honest and say that many boots don't get the justice wear that they deserve uh, that I put them through. I think sometime next year, I'm probably going to have to start selling some that I just don't wear that often and whomever buys them is going to get a lightly worn, well cared for boot when I do. Anyway, that's to start to say that I haven't worn this pair anything like I really should have done. But they are one of my favourite pairs, so I have certainly worn them more than say any of my Red Wings, uh, any of my Thursdays and even some of my classic ones like Wolverine, Ellen Edmonds and even some R.M. Williams's. So, trying to remember, I do try to take this pair on vacations when I know that my wife and I will do a lot of hiking. Uh, I take them when I'm traveling to the Kimberley for work in the northwest of Australia, uh, or to the top end in Darwin and Arnhem Land and Central Australia, which is rarer these days uh, as I edge toward retirement. And certainly at home, I'll try to remember to put them on uh, when we go for our long walks in the hills, uh, in our parks and forest reserves. I don't wear them as work boots when I'm working around the house and the yard or at my wife's uh, investment properties, so I really I protect them that way. Overall, I worked out when I was planning this video, I think that over the last year I've worn them maybe over a thousand kilometers or converting about 600 plus miles, which, um, you know, for a guy with a hundred pairs of boots, uh, isn't bad. <laughs> I admit, uh, most of that mileage uh, were on my trips away when I'd wear them for a week at a time. Uh, at any rate, what I'm trying to say is that for, for many, after a year that'd be a lot more mileage, but even then, I, I think I still feel that my wear has given me enough to say how these have evolved with a, a reasonably substantive number of clicks. So now let's start with a quick look at the style uh, brand or brands and construction reminder. Uh, mainly for those of you who are uh, new to Heritage Boots or ahem, too lazy to go and look at my original review or even at my unboxing video up there. <laughs> uh, in terms of boot style, this is not quite a Parkhurst service boot, not quite a NYX work boot. I've seen it described on Reddit as getting uh, that service boot look but rock solid work boot quality NYX is known for and I totally agree. It's a little over 6 inches in the shaft, measured from the top of the heel, nearly 8 inches high overall. It has a leather stacked block heel and a beefy pull loop, if you like pull loops. It is stitched down construction. Uh, it's leather everything. <laughs> Nix, who made this boot, is of course a Pacific Northwest brand, uh, founded in 1964 and famous for well-built, sturdy American work boots covering uh, the big beefy trades like logging, bushfire fighting and construction work. Most of 
uh, their boot models sell for around the high 500s to mid 600s in US dollars. Uh, in collaboration, Parkhurst was founded by Andrew Savisco in Buffalo, uh, New York State in 2018 and is now well regarded as a quality small batch manufacturer producing plain toe and cap toe service boots with some unique and very interesting leathers uh, with their boots averaging the high 300s US. Their collaboration is quite unique. First, I believe that when Nix announced it on their Instagram, they said that it was their the first ever collaboration between boot brands. Uh, in my interview with Andrew Savisco, the owner of Parkhurst, uh, which you can see up there, by the way, we talked about the, uh, this particular collaboration and how a coffee with the CEO of Nix, uh, Charles Moy, led to discussions about a collab. Nix used their Falcon model with its full leather stitch down construction and combined it with uh, Parkhurst's iconic 602 last to create a sleeker profile to the Falcon. This makes a far dressier boot than Nix have ever made and it gives an undeniably Parkhurst shape, uh, a wickedly rugged construction that Parkhurst could not, I think, by themselves have replicated. I've mentioned stitch down construction a couple of times, so for people new to boots who might be a bit puzzled, you can watch my discussion of the different types of boot construction up here, uh, or very quickly, just take a look here at this area where the uppers of the boot are connected to the sole of the boot. In stitch down construction, the uppers are molded around the last and then the edge of the leather is turned out, flared out, and then stitched directly to the veg tan uh, leather midsole. This is a double row stitch down. And in some cases of double row stitch down, one row stitches the uppers to the midsole, uh, and then the second goes all the way through the uppers, the midsole, and through the outsole. But in this case, both stitches go through all layers altogether. Now, just a moment here to talk about the frayed stitching. A lot of people look at that and get terrified, but you don't have to worry. Um, the, the fraying of the stitches over here doesn't make this any less uh, sturdy and it doesn't mean it's about to fall apart. What happens with double row stitching is the stitches go through the layers and they kind of lock on each other as they go through inside. And apart from that, the glues are super, super good these days. Double row stitch down is a more traditional form of boot construction even than Goodyear welting and it has the same advantages being water resistance and the ease of resoling. But I'll leave the supporters of uh, either to argue the better merits of each. In my use of them, they're not going to need a resole and I have splashed through uh, running brooks in them. And my feet have been totally dry. But here's what I really want to talk about, how they have worn in a year and through about a thousand kilometers. So let me talk about performance and comfort and then about QC. Functionally, I don't wear these as work boots. Uh, in fact, uh, Nick's often refer to this as a dressier version. So to be honest, they are probably not intended to be worn uh, putting up bushfires. Although they probably could. <laughs> they feel uh, tough enough for sure. They feel substantial. So in the sense of not work boots, they took an incredibly uh, surprisingly short amount of time to break in, just two weeks or maybe even a little less of wearing them constantly uh, before I put them into my regular rotation. Part of that I think is because they are made from Chrome XL from Horween. Uh, it's a combination tan, super waxy and oily hot stuff leather that is 200% forgiving and flexible and easy to warm up and softens with body heat, sweat and wear time even as thick and heavy as these are. Part of it is the stitch down construction, I think, on a single leather midsole, which means that the sole doesn't take a lot to flex and train itself to flex at the right spot across the uh, ball of your foot. Part of it is definitely the design, where a uh, veg tan leather heel counter locks your heel in, uh, and where the Nyx leather arch builds up, uh, aiding Parkhurst's combination 602 last to provide a uh, a tapered uh, uh, arch, a uh, snug heel, with the firm arch support that you expect from PNW boots. Once broken in, that construction and the beautiful comfort of the 602 last just keeps on giving and evolving and shaping to the exact shape of your feet. I mean by this, not only does the insole and arch support mold to your feet, but so do the uppers to provide both comfort and support. I can't think of uh, one meter of that thousand clicks where I had sore feet even when worn 10 hours a day. 
In terms of wear, the Chrome XL has worn beautifully. Uh, I've conditioned this twice. Once quite early on uh, where I took them on a trip where I had to cross a flowing brook. They got wet and uh, then dried quickly in the heat. And when I got home, I applied a little uh, liquid Neats foot oil and then Venetian shoe cream on top. The second time was only a few months ago, just, just a, a regular good brushing and then VSC. Both times there were little scuffs, uh, uh, but both times the conditioning just took those scuffs away. As you can see, the uh, original clicking uh, or leather selection was really good. The creases across the vamp are very, very fine and no sign of loose grain anywhere. To be honest, the leather has rolled more than creased, I think. A tiny little color variation is happening. I think as I walk and the boot just uh, turns and falls, uh, pressure is put on the leather in different places and the oils move around like a, like a genuine pull-up. I quite like it. I'm never going to win any Thunderdome, but it's looking nice. The toes in particular, I think, and that's where I guess the most pressure is applied when the boots are lasted. The toes have become a bit lighter in undertones. In terms of quality control, QC, I've seen nothing to fault the construction. Bear in mind that this is made by a rugged, handmade work boot maker. You're not going to get a fine European finish, you know. So even from the unboxing, the stitch down stitch density wasn't exactly perfectly even or fine. The raft of a midsole wasn't exactly, exactly uh, cut or sanded closely to the uppers. Uh, but all the stitching and gluing and nailing has kept everything together over time. I have not seen a loose stitch or a thread snap or one layer of leather lift from another. So after a year, everything's good. So in summary, uh, function and form have come together well and everything you expect about function is exactly how it should be and everything about form looks like it should look. I bought this for 600 US dollars uh, plus nearly a hundred uh, uh, in postage to Australia. Now that is big money for me in those days when almost all of my expensive boots were bought secondhand off eBay. I had to have this though. <laughs> my favorite brand and last Parkhurst and I really wanted to try a new PNW boot bought directly from the maker to experience their uh, order, construction and delivery systems. Ah, <laughs> my dedication to get the facts for you. You know, I don't regret it. This is everything I could have imagined in substantial bootery. <laughs> A substantially built boot that is comfortable and I'm pretty sure will stand the test of time. The way I wear my boots, I doubt I'll ever have to resole this. So anyone out there who might get these as a light construction work boot, for example, you go for it because if you have to resole it or rebuild it, this is going to go on forever. That's my catch up. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did and you found it useful, do me a favor back and click on like and subscribe. It really helps my channel no end. Uh, if you can do that, thank you. Until the next time, take care and see you again soon.